From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. New research shows some big changes coming to the mainstay of Montana's agriculture industry. Dependence on water provided by winter snowpack may soon be broken up. Coming up, see what's leading to that big change. Hi, I'm Mike Dennison at the Capitol. Coming up, the conversion to a new statewide voter database may be delayed. All right, 6.30 on, oh, that's a great shot right yeah, there. A little it? snowy on the uh, Montana State <laughs> Ooh, University chilly. campus. Last day of finals week, big prep for the game. Chet Lehman, Ashley Washburn joining us this morning. I'm filling in here on the morning show. Glad to have you as a part of the team. Glad to be here. Yeah, thank you. You know, looking at that snow, they had, I don't even know how many volunteers they had at the stadium yesterday. Yep. Uh, Shoveling. Yep. But they might have to, I don't know if they'll have to do a little bit they, more today, but. They may be able to use a, a leaf blower to get rid of this there snow. You go. But <laughs> it's still very cold yeah. outside uh, for the morning. The ice is still there on the area roadways. We've got a layer of snow on top of it. It is slick out in the area. Temperatures in to the teens. Wind chill at times this morning has been below zero. So uh, layers, make sure that you dress your child like an onion within layers. <laughs> Thanks, Shrek. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, skies should clear pretty quickly this afternoon. The snow is already tapering off, as you can see. Uh, still dealing with that slick roadway across the area. Slick roadways across the area. Temperatures into the teens for both uh, areas east and west of the divide today. I'm going to break down the road conditions much more in just a few minutes. Dress like an onion. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, while this winter is off to a so slow start, researchers are warning today's unusual could become normal and even more severe in decades to come. MTN's Dennis Bragg dives into a report that has everyone in the water management and climate business talking. A new study from the Berkeley lab suggests our recent hit or miss winters are actually part of a larger trend, with mountain snowpack dropping since 1950 and no longer consistent on the April 1st data we've used to measure water runoff. Some of our um, results of the study really point to a similar uh, magnitude of loss by mid-century on the order of 20 percent and up to as high as 50 percent by end of century. But we're finding that as the world warms about a degree Celsius uh, since pre-industrial times across the western U.S. that that peak timing of April 1st has actually shifted earlier in time by about a week. Rhodes, Cirilla Woodburn, and their colleagues see a future where snowfall could actually become a rarity, starting in the coast ranges and spreading our way by the 2070s. And so we'd coin this term low to no snow by using this uh, a peak snow water equivalent metric combined with a percentile approach. Uh, and we use these percentiles because um, we didn't want to set a threshold of what a magnitude of sweet should look like to be normal or not normal and be applicable across different mountain regions. Climate change impacts in the mountains are not an isolated uh, kind of problem just for those communities. Uh, that water is distributed uh, hundreds, even thousands of miles away. And researchers tell me the problem is more far reaching than just ski areas shutting down. Uh, trying to understand this, the, the amount of snowpack decrease in the future is not really the end all be all of the story. What the report forecasts is a cascading effect with less water meaning drier soils, shifting plant and animal species, and more fire. Not less moisture necessarily, but rain instead of snow. And that's just simply due to the fact that the freezing point of water is non-negotiable and that, you know, as, you, as the world continues to warm by a degree, two degrees, three degrees, four degrees uh, into the end of the century, that freezing line, especially at lower elevations, shifts upslope or it can't be persistent for long periods of time. So that just inhibits, even if you have same precipitation amounts, you just can't have uh, snowpack accumulate and build and be maintained throughout the year. You're going to have differences in years from one to the other. So, uh, but, but you're looking at this picture over decades, right? That's right. And that's, that's where we really don't have that historical analog. And so I think that's where we're looking to try to understand what's the implications of prolonged periods of drought. What does it mean for um, sort of thresholds in, in our water system that sort of results in a quote unquote water failure? At Lolo Pass, Dennis Bragg, MTN News. Several weeks ago, we reported on concerns raised by local election officials about Montana converting to a new voter database before the system had been properly vetted. On Thursday, Secretary of State Christy Jacobson, who's in charge of the project, appeared before a legislative panel to update lawmakers on its status. MTN's Mike Dennison reports it appears that implementation of the new system may be delayed. 
Last month, election administrators who've been helping test the new voter database told a legislative committee they were worried the state's chief election officer, Christy Jacobson, might launch the system before it was ready. But on Thursday, Jacobson, her staff, and the county officials who had concerns assured the panel that's not going to happen. Jacobson and the project leader, Stuart Fuller, said the call on whether to go live with the new system will be made on Monday after conferring with staff, local officials, and the company developing it. If on the 20th, and we, after we reviewed all of the criteria, that if the system is not ready, we will not go live because it's not ready. And we will work then for what the next steps are with this system. The new database called Elect MT is replacing a 15-year-old system called Montana Votes. The database is used by all 56 county election offices to do things like prepare absentee ballots, check signatures on those ballots, or make sure voters aren't registered in more than one location. We want to make sure, absolutely, that it is working correctly. We're issuing ballots correctly, we're able to return ballots, we're able to manage the election process through the system. Testing of the new system has been underway this month, and on Thursday, Cascade County Election Administrator Rena Fontana Moore said the system still has some bugs and is not yet ready to launch. I think I can say that we're in agreement that it is a, it's going to be a fantastic program when it is ready. But right now, as far as the elections administrators are concerned, it is not ready. If the go live decision is delayed next week, Fuller said the state will continue to use the old system for 2022 elections and continue to get elect MT ready for the next year. Jacobson also assured lawmakers that both she and county officials are on the same page when it comes to the voter database and getting the new system in place. We can all agree that our common goal is to modernize and secure our elections, and this system is the best way to do that. It sounds like the decision next Monday is all but made. Election MT will be delayed. And lawmakers and election officials made it clear Thursday they want to continue Montana's record of secure, accurate elections. Reporting from the Capitol, Mike Dennison, MTN News. All right, thank you, Mike. 637 now. A Maryland woman hoping to recover tens of thousands of dollars she sent to a man she met on a dating site. Oh, that's a lot of money. And Mallory Sofistay has more on how romance scammers manipulate their victims as we count down the 12 scams of Christmas. Victims report losing the highest sums of money in these scams. An FBI agent telling me seven figures isn't uncommon. He's seen a case where the victim lost two million. And these crimes are emotionally devastating. Aside from losing their life savings, victims lose their ability to trust. I just wanted companionship. That's all. This Maryland woman didn't want to be identified, but wants to get the word out about the man who stole her heart and money. He said his name was Patrick Brown. He used these photos on his Our Time dating profile, but we couldn't find any online records showing this man with that name. We were talking every day, every night. He claimed to be a widowed engineer. He said that he had been married to his wife for 34 years. And he'd been called to Egypt to work on a project. And he said, I accepted this project without really thinking about everything it entailed. I said, what do you mean? He said, I have to buy tools. And the company promised me they would take care of that, and they are not doing it. He said, I really need to get a loan. I said, well, why don't you get a loan? Not thinking he was talking about me. She waited a month, then sent him $17,000. He responded that he also needed help with his rent. I said, pay your rent. I can't take care of you and myself, too. He said, I, I just need you to help me with this project. I will give you 40% of my earnings and pay you back once I finish this, the project. For about a year, she sent him monthly stipends. How much money did you end up giving him? $94,330. How did you send him the money? It was uh, Bitcoin. I had never heard of it, had never dealt with that machine. It was he who told me how to do it. We've seen losses uh, going into the seven figures. FBI Supervisory Special Agent Keith Custer said these romance scams operate like a business enterprise. A lower level group that are reaching out, making initial contacts, trying to, uh, you know, bait the hook. And then once uh, a, a victim is identified, 
uh, someone who's more ex experienced in working or you know, kind of closing uh, an individual will, will step in. They're usually working multiple victims at a time and using psychology to influence them. They're very expert in identifying, you know, what kind of the levers are that will move a person, whether it's, you know, hope or, or love or greed or fear, and then they'll, uh, you know, mani manipulate that. There are signs this woman wishes she hadn't ignored inconsistencies in his story, not being able to meet in person or video chat. I started having so many doubts about this guy. But she didn't listen until he ghosted her. You trusted him. I did. I did. But my trust is gone now, and it has made it bad for others. Her first and the last interaction on a dating site, and she's advising others. Once a person starts asking for money, just end the relationship. Many of the groups perpetrating these scams are in other countries, making it harder for the FBI to shut them down. Plus, cryptocurrency is irreversible. The FBI has seen some success in recovering funds if they're immediately notified, but most victims don't realize they've been scammed for several weeks, months, even years. With your 12 Scams of Christmas, I'm Mallory Safoste. Well, here's a couple things that you could do to hopefully help prevent that. Research the person's name, see if their photo is being used on other sites under different profiles. And if you're a victim of this scam, report it to the FBI. We have a link to their Internet Crime Complaint Center on our website. Gosh, crazy. Well, and it, it's unfortunate because, you know, I mean, how do you trust someone after that Playing again? with people's hearts. That Ugh. just makes me ill. Horrible. Right. 642 from the romance scam to another scam going around the holidays. Gift card alert coming up for the holidays. Find out what you need to know at 649.